Yeah, I'm really honored to be, be part of this gathering and to be on uh, and recognize I'm on Treaty 6 territory. And so I really appreciate uh, the, the invite to be here. Uh, I'm going to go into really sort of a high level overview of what the Alberta government's climate plan uh, was and the process that they took uh, to get there. Definitely a lot of the plan uh, as still still needs to be developed. And so really we only have sort of the bare bones of what, what they've committed to. Uh, and then Ariel's gonna talk a little bit more about sort of the, the actual First Nation and Métis cons uh, consultation part of that, which is pretty inadequate. And then I think Clay is gonna broaden the discussion to focus sort of more uh, on the national scope and then Tom's gonna take us global. So uh, the Alberta government uh, started its uh, process uh, in August of last year uh, by appointing a, a five-person panel led by uh, a guy named Andrew Leach, who is a, an economist at the University of Alberta. Uh, the consultation process really involved sort of three different components. So the first part was a, a public uh, engagement uh, process, and so this uh, involved an online survey. Uh, about 25,000 people uh, responded to the survey. Uh, it had a series of, well, not a series, two open houses, uh, one in Edmonton, one in Calgary, uh, with about 500 uh, to 600 people participating in each of those uh, open houses. Uh, and then there was also the ability to make any type of online submission. And so anybody that wanted to make an official submission to the government's panel was able to do that uh, online. And 535 uh, people, uh, organizations, or businesses uh, did that to the, the government process. Uh, the panel also uh, engaged in what they call these stakeholder engagement processes. Uh, and so these were on a variety of different topics like uh, buildings, uh, oil and gas, uh, energy efficiency, uh, and involved about 350 different stakeholders from industry, government, organizations, and the public. And then just go back to the last slide, and then the final piece of that was there was some First Nation Métis engagement, which Ariel, I think, is gonna talk, talk about more, but involved uh, 47 participants, according to the government, and 30 different First Nations or Métis communities or organizations were represented. Uh, so after this whole process, uh, so next slide, um, the government came up uh, with their policy and their official recommendations, which were released in, in November, uh, just prior to the Paris Agreement. Uh, and so there's really sort of four key things that the, the government announced within, within their uh, policy. Uh, again, the details for most of these really still need to be developed, and so this is just sort of very high level. So the first one is around electricity, and so what the government announced is that they are going to completely phase out coal uh, by 2030. And so all our current coal plants are gonna be decommissioned, uh, and what they want that to be replaced with uh, one third will be replaced with natural gas, and then two thirds of it will be replaced by renewables. Uh, and so also within the plan is the commitment that at least 30% of Alberta's uh, electricity generation will be from renewable sources by 2030 as well. Uh, currently, just so that you know, it's about uh, six to 7% renewables. And so it is a pretty, pretty big increase from where we are today. Uh, the second thing that was announced was the province has said that they are going to move forward on a carbon price uh, and that this is going to be economy-wide. And so basically everything that creates emissions uh, from gas tanks to large emitters like the, the tar sands uh, will now be charged uh, a price uh, on carbon. That price is going to be about $20 uh, starting in January 2017 and rising to $30 uh, a tonne. Uh, the next year, and then that will go up with the, the consumer price index uh, years following. Uh, just for context, that most people say that to actually reduce emissions, carbon prices need to be around 100 to 150 dollars uh, a ton to actually have, you know, some emission reduction capacity. So Alberta is pretty low in that regard, but it will generate uh, a bunch of revenue. And so they imagine in the first year that about $3 billion will be generated from the, the carbon price uh, in place. Uh, they said that where they want that to go, 50% will be uh, to reductions, uh, and then 50% will go to low-income households, small businesses, First Nations, and people working in the coal industry. 
the next plank is uh, methane, and so the methane uh, contributes about 30 million tons of greenhouse gases in the province right now. They've said that they want to reduce that by about 45% uh, by 2025. And then the last big plank is around the tar sands, and so the oil sands, or tar sands, now have a ceiling of 100 million tons. So current tar sands emissions are about 70 million tons, so that still allows 30 million tons of growth, uh, but they need to stay with under that. Uh, excluded from that is any type of cogeneration, uh, and also excluded from that is if the province builds any new refineries, that is completely excluded. Uh, cogen is just when they use sort of some of the energy that's uh, used in the oil sands to, to make more energy. Um, so just some of the good really quickly. So some of the good is that Alberta will actually phase out of coal. Uh, and so, you know, of course, coal has been linked to tons of different uh, health and uh, cancer and asthma risks. And so that's really good. Uh, the Alberta plan will start to usher in renewables, which is a really good thing because Alberta has tremendous renewable energy potential, especially for solar and wind, really throughout the province. Uh, and so that, that is good. We're also expecting that the Alberta government will announce some type of interim solar policy, a rebate policy that folks should be able to take advantage of. Uh, and then the 100 megaton cap on tar sands emissions basically means that the tar sands are capped at what is currently operating and what is under construction. So it will be capped there unless there's improvements. And then next slide. And then there's a bunch of things, of course, missing under the plan. And I don't have time to go into all of them, but, but here is a couple of big ones. So under the plan, Alberta's emissions today are going to be the same as they, in 2030, they'll be the same as they are today. So at a time when the world is really demanding that we have these drastic reductions, uh, Alberta's plan will really do nothing to actually reduce emissions uh, in the next uh, 15 years. The plan also doesn't have any short or long-term targets, so we have absolutely no idea in terms of you know, how much the Alberta government really wants to reduce emissions, if that's actually in line with science. We have no way of telling because they have absolutely no targets uh, at all in the plan. Uh, and then, of course, the other big one is just the, the First Nation and Métis consultation. So the consultation process was really wholly inadequate. Uh, this is something that the government uh, has said was wholly inadequate, but whether it's actually gonna be addressed, we have no idea. So we know that policy announcements are starting to already come out, and to my knowledge, there has been no real engagement with First Nation and Métis communities to find out what those policies are and, uh, and what they should be. And I think that's it. <coughs>